Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's discuss um, an example where a limit does not exist of a sequence and, and, and talk about how we can give a rigorous statement using epsilons and n's of why um, it doesn't work or why the limit doesn't exist. So suppose, <clears throat> uh, for instance, this is a fairly simple one, but if we have like something like negative n to the n, and that's our sequence. Well, that bounces around between positive one and negative one, just looks like this. Bouncy, 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 bouncy. So if we're taking a look at that, um, and maybe this is when n is zero, so call that n is zero here. Well, what should the limit be? Hmm. Well, let's just say, what if the limit was something down here, right? Well, that can't be because um, no matter if you pick small tolerances around it, what happens? Eventually, um, uh, so no matter where you pick it, right? Um, the sequence is never in, in there, right? It's just out of there. So that's fairly clear um, that we can't have that if we're just kind of thinking intuitively. Now, what if the limit was up here? Surely a lot of the sequence would always be in, was be in it. So if, if we're trying for one, for, for it to be the limit, but given any tolerance value around it, um, no matter where we pick, there's always guys outside of it. So that doesn't work, does it? Nope. Um, and similarly, if we pick anything else. So we can, you know, in a picture, we can kind of get this, right? <clears throat> and uh, technically speaking, maybe we can write something as follows. <clears throat> if, um, let's just assume we take, uh, let's assume it has a limit, so call the limit L. Okay, then let's show that um, no matter where we are, N, there's always something that's going to be outside of this epsilon thing for L, um, at least for certain epsilons. In fact, if we just show it's not true even for one epsilon value, that would be enough. Maybe we just pick epsilon is equal to, in fact, we can even just pick, um, pick one, since the distance between here is two even, just let epsilon be one. Even just, we just need one epsilon value to, to, to fail for every single option of limit that we have. <clears throat> So we can say, um, um, assume, so assume that there exists, assume that there exists a limit, right? That it's getting close to. Then we take epsilon is to be one, right? Okay, then we have, um, all we have to show is that, uh, that there is some, that no matter what end we pick, so, um, so for, yeah, so it's gonna be whatever n we pick. So just given, given any n, what's happening? Then beyond it, then, um, then let n be bigger than n. We just have to show that there exists an a sub n that's, that's, uh, that's bigger than one away from L. So let's see, a sub n minus L, we just need that this, we just need this thing to be bigger than one. Well, we can take cases. What happens if L is, I mean, we can put L in different places, right? What happens if L is below this line? So below the, uh, so it's L is negative, okay? So when L is negative, um, then, uh, okay, so if L is negative, then if, then you, then there's always an A sub N, that is bigger than, in fact, you could just take, take n to be even, then just take an even n that's bigger than n. So if, if n is even and it's bigger than n, that implies that a sub n is equal to positive one. And you know that L is, is uh, and you know that L is negative, right? So let's think about what that means. So a sub n is one, so we have one, and l is negative, so this is gonna look like um, minus a minus, right? 
So you could even say plus the absolute value of L because that's kind of what's happening. If you have two negatives, you're gonna get a positive out here. And so this really is what this part looks like. And it's supposed to be less than epsilon, but let's see, epsilon is equal to one. And what do we know? This has to be bigger than one because of our assumption. We assume that L is less than zero and its absolute value is bigger than zero. And so we're getting a number that's bigger than one over here. So we just contradict that in that case. The other case is very symmetric. If we let L be greater than zero, the same basic idea holds. Um, then we know, then we're gonna get, we can assume A sub N is equal to negative one um, for N odd that's bigger than that. So we have negative one and then here L is positive. So we're gonna have a, so we have minus L but L is positive. So this is just kind of like, um, so we could think of putting an absolute value around here. It means the same thing. You can factor the negative out and it'll cancel out with the absolute values. And so you really have this idea happening again, which you again know is bigger than one for the exact same reasons. Um, and, but epsilon was supposed to be one and this is supposed to be less than it. So hence we just did a little contradiction by cases this is this argument is a little bit there's a little bit to it, but it kind of shows you how it's possible and kind of te in a technical te in a technical sense using some logic you can you can finagle these things to actually definitively show that something doesn't have a limit um, uh, no matter what it is. So we kind of had L being arbitrary and showed it for any L to make sure that no L really worked. Um, now in general though you're not gonna be asked to go run through such a technical argument all the time. Usually what you do is you could just use some intuition. You see it's bouncing around. It means it doesn't have a limit. It's not narrowing in on any place. So sometimes things have limits and sometimes things don't. And um, this type of reasoning could be useful to you in, at some point, but nonetheless, I give it here as an example. Thanks for watching.